and they would want to work with you to get that down because your downwind neighbors would be impacted by this chronic gas emission. So one to 200 tons a day was already a bit of a problem and we had signs in the downwind area warning people about that. Some people avoided getting out of their cars there. Now the beginning of the year, look what happened to the gas readings. They went up 10 times. We were getting a thousand tons a day. Now that is an awful lot of SO2 and an awfully dangerous amount of gas immediately nearby. But we had uh, no clue except for the scientists uh, telling us because you know how some gases are visible like water vapor and other gases are invisible like carbon, carbon dioxide? Well, sulfur dioxide when it first comes out is not a visible gas. So surprisingly, we could stand here in January and look out and we would see little wisps of steam here and there like you see today in the, in the caldera. And, but there was no large cloud of gas. There was really nothing to indicate that there was this increase of gas emissions. But the scientists said, beware, this is really a health risk for people on that side. So the park did close the road, um, starting here and around the, the area which was most likely to have the gas problems. Well, good thing we had the place closed because in the middle of the night on March 11th, there was an explosion. And that hole that you see where the gas is coming out, the, the precursors of that hole opened up. Now, when the hole opened up, it was only half as big as it is today. Because over the ensuing months, we've had other little explosions. We've had landslides uh, down the, the rim of the hole. And basically, the hole is gradually getting bigger. Now, um, what's down that hole? A lake of lava. What has happened with the volcano is that the internal plumbing system has returned liquid lava close to the surface here at the summit. So this idea of a lava lake here at the summit, which was so common for months and months and months and years and decades on end, this may be our future. If the lava lake continues to rise in the conduit, and it's thought to be several hundred feet down. They did catch a glimpse of it a few months ago, and it is on the online. It's on the HBO, Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory website. And you can click on it, and there'll be a little movie there that shows, in the midst of all this steam, a bubbling lava lake. Now, the bubbles are bubbles of magmatic gas. Gas that is bringing the lava up is bubbling up through the liquid lava, and of course, we are seeing it, and it's condensing a great deal of water vapor because of the rising heat. So, gas is one of the precursors to a new eruption. How about this kind of a scenario? Okay, tremor is the second precursor. What we have here is a uh, Xerox of the seismograph from um, July, excuse me, June of 07. Uh, what was happening this day is we had a sort of normal day, and then within about a half an hour, the needle started jumping. This is a one day's worth of uh, paper. And this is a small, non-damaging, but extremely exciting seismic signal, because this kind of signal indicates that liquid lava is moving inside the mountain in a new place, in a new way. And it is cracking through layers of solid rock plumbing system. Now, if this sort of thing continues for very long, the scientists can basically hone in on the place, because we have so many seismographs placed around. And then you'll see a situation that they'll actually get there before it starts happening. They see a crack open up, <coughs> they see steam come out, and then what else comes out? The lava, the lava comes squirting out. So they're getting awfully good at pinning down where and when new eruptions will begin. Now the third measurement is the shape of the ground itself. And if you're getting wet, let's move so that you can stand against the building. It'll be like your raincoat. And I will be